For our big budget bike test in 2016, we tested a number of bikes between the $650 and £1,000 mark, which is roughly $800 to $1,400. The bikes we tested included the Candale Trail 4, the Diamondback Heist, the Sonda Transmitter, the Saracen Mantra Trail, the Ragley Marley, the Pinnacle Iroco 2, and the Boardman Team FS. The cheapest bike in this group is the Cannondale Trail 4. Cannondale can't really compete with other bikes in this price point on specking levels, but where they do compete well is with the frame. The front triangle is made from Cannondale's traditional big fat tubing, which gives plenty of stiffness up front. At the back, Cannondale's save chain stays and seat stays give a slightly more refined ride and it helps take the sting out of the trail. The only downside of the frame is that the head tube isn't tapered steer compatible, which really limits upgrade potential. As previously mentioned, the specking on the Cannondale isn't quite up there with some of the best bikes in this price range. OK, the RockShox XE30 fork is reasonably well damped at this price, but it's still a QR fork and therefore it is quite flexy, especially with those 30mm stanchions. The WTB tyres aren't the grippiest. They do roll well on sort of dry, man-made terrain, but if it gets wet or you want to take them somewhere a little bit gnarlier, then you are going to struggle there. It's great to see the Shimano gears at this price, however, they're not matched by the Tektro brakes, which are a little bit too wooden for our tastes. When the trail gets bumpy, as we mentioned earlier, the ride isn't too bad, with the back end giving a little bit of compliance. Unfortunately, the geometry itself isn't brilliant. The 70 degree head angle, the 100mm stem and the narrow bars really make it quite a twitchy, nervous ride. You could improve things with a shorter stem and wider bars, but there's very little you can do to the head angle. If you're looking for a really capable trail hardtail at quite a budget price, then the Diamondback Heist is definitely a bike worth looking at. At this end of the market, there's probably a little bit less money to develop nice frames, so it's nice to see that Diamondback have gone for a real trail orientation rather than the easier, more traditional cross-country type frame. If you just looked at the spec list, you wouldn't guess how cheap this bike really is. Up front, there's a RockShox Recon fork, which, although it doesn't have a bolt-through axle, is really nicely damped and a real contender for a top fork at this price point. Schwab knobby nick tyres give plenty of bite and are nice and aggressive for all-round trail riding in a big range of conditions. And there's Shimano SLX and XT gearing here, something which you'd expect to see on bikes four, five or six hundred pounds more expensive. The reach is decent, the head angle's not too steep and the seat angle means you can also pedal uphill really nicely. It's quite an aggressive character, the only letdown on this though is that the frame is pretty harsh, so you do get rattled around a little bit, especially with those 27.5 inch wheels. We do think that the Heist is definitely one of the best bikes in this price point. Were it not for a couple of absolutely exceptional bikes, this may well have been our top pick. Saracen is one of those UK bike brands that seems to have been around for decades and decades, and this is Mantra Trail really is one to keep an eye out for. We managed to get an early sample of the 2017 Mantra Trail. Saracen had made a few subtle changes to the bike for 2017, but perhaps the most noticeable thing was just how light the bike is. At 12.6 kilos and with fast rolling tyres, it's a bike that's really eager to accelerate out of turns, hop over logs and jump over rocks. In terms of geometry, as mentioned, the changes have been subtle, but they are worthwhile. The top tube is 10mm longer, while the stem is 10mm shorter. So the overall length from saddle to bar is the same, but you get a longer front centre for better stability at speed. The BB is dropped by 10mm and there's a degree off the head angle too. What this means is the lower centre of gravity means cornering's better and the slack head angle makes it a little bit more confidence in sparring in steeper terrain. The racing raft tyres roll really quickly and are nice and light. They're perhaps a little bit puncture prone. Up front there's a Suntour Radon fork, which is air sprung, has a bolt through axle and a tapered steerer, and this is a great fork for the money. We've certainly no complaints to see Shimano Dior stop and go systems on this bike. There's a clutch mech to keep the chain in check, and the front mount is banded on, so it's easy to remove if you want to make it a 1x10 system. The Dior brakes are consistent and reliable, and we'd be happy to see them on pretty much any bike in this test. So if you're looking for an all-rounder trail bike for the UK, we reckon the Mantra Trail really is a good option. Much like its namesake, the Ragley Marley is a real relaxed, slacked-out geometry trail bike, but it's also fun and uplifting to ride as well. While the Marley might not be the longest bike on the market, it does have a super slack 65.5 degree head angle. It's also got a short stem and wide bar and a low BB. What this means is that when the trail points down, there's plenty of capability in the bike to be able to get you down there safely. This character is definitely backed up by the spec on the bike. 
There's a Manitou Minute Comp 130mm fork which comes with a tapered steerer and their unique Hexlock 15mm bolt through axle. And this is paired with a WTB Vigilante tyre in its really grippy compound up front. Ultimately to go down a hill you've got to get to the top of it first. Fortunately the Mali is well set up in this regard too. There's a 2x10 drivetrain with an FSA double chain set up front and this comes pre-fitted with a bash guard. If you run over in a single ring there's ISC G05 mounts as well so you can run a chain guide. The clutch controlled rear mech stops the chain slapping around. If you're the type of rider then who doesn't want to spend too much cash but does want to ride really rough technical steep terrain then the Ragley Mile is probably a bike for you. The suspension up front is great, there's plenty of traction from the front tyre and the gears will get you back up to the top of the hill. The Pinnacle Rocco is a bike that's traditionally done pretty well in tests and it's clear that for 2017 Pinnacle have spent quite a lot of time developing the frame to keep it bang up to date. The frame is clearly well built and there's a few nice little touches in there such as the 142x12 bolt through rear axle and a tapered head tube. It's also stealth dropper post routed too. Matching the rather nice frame is a pretty decent spec list as well. There's a RockShox Recon Gold Fork with a 15mm bolt through axle in there and Shimano Dior brakes and gears. Our only real grumble is a slow pickup from the rear hub but you've still got a trail bike that's really fun to ride and it's got loads of upgrade potential too. Our favourite full suspension bike in this price point and indeed in the whole of our big budget bike test is the Boardman Team FS. It's a bike that's traditionally done very well in most of the tests it's ever been entered into and for 2017 there's been a few subtle but significant changes to the bike. New tube profiles and suspension linkages mean it's bang up to date and even competes with bikes almost double its price. The ride is nicely controlled by a RockShox Monarch rear shock and a RockShox Sector RL fork up front. The Continental X-King tyres roll nice and fast while there's a SRAM GX 2x10 group set to keep you rolling. Complementing the build is a nice 630mm top tube and 50mm stem which means that geometry is still up to date. Despite being a complete newcomer to the mountain bike market, the Sonder Transmitter was our highest scoring hardtail bike in this test. What we've got is a really trail orientated, nice and slack, poppy, fun to ride plus hardtail which takes the sting out of the trail with its big WTB 3 inch tyres. For the money the spec list is incredible. You've got a RockShox sector fork with boost spacing and you've got a full 11 speed SRAM NX group set. The rest of the bike is built up with in-house Love Mud branded kit. There's a short stem, there's a wide bar and a comfy saddle too. Sonda also offer a wide range of upgrades such as a RockShox Yari fork or a RockShox reverb dropper seat post and they're all ready to go straight from its online shop. To learn a little bit more about the bike, I'll pass over to Guy Kesteven who's going to tell you a little bit more about how it rides. This category is where we're seeing a, a big discrepancy between some brands that have dug deep into their ingenuity and got some really modern contemporary points, whether it's geometry, componentry or the whole plus size thing, and some that have stayed with a more traditional bike and they're inevitably the ones that have suffered when it comes to trail time. And that's where the Sonda Transmitter comes in. Obviously something of a wild card, even having this in the category, but every time we've taken it onto the trail, the capability those big tyres give you is, you know, just very clearly an advantage when it's rough, when it's rooty, when you're just chucking it about or maybe you're going into sections too fast, it gets through it. And the geometry is bang up to date in enduro terms. You only got to look at the bike, it's very long front, slack head angle, short stem, big wide bars. And because Sonda do it work direct, they have a big pricing advantage. And in this case, that gets you a full SRAM uh, NX group set for £850, which is pretty remarkable. I mean, plus tyres do have their drawbacks. You know, they are heavier, they're more puncture prone, and you do have to get the pressures right on them. But once you hit that sweet spot with your pump, they just flow beautifully over the kind of trails that would otherwise kick a hardtail into touch. And that's what we've been seeing whenever we've ridden it. It's a very, very compelling argument for why plus bikes are a serious force now at hardtails at any level. And that's something we're seeing right through the uh, bargain bike of the year testing this year. So there we have it. The Sonda is an incredibly well-priced, innovative, plus trail hardtail that really takes the sting out of any trail. The Boardman's clearly had a lot of thought and time put into it, and it's a really competitive full suspension package for any rider. International viewers might want to look at the Diamondback Heist. It's an incredible bike for the money, and we reckon 2017 could be even better.